ta like tasks at work or taking care of yourself. Like things as simple as tying your shoes or like feeding yourself are a major life activity. And someone cannot be excluded from a job if they if they can, are so qualified to perform the job with a le without with or without reasonable accommodation. And what a reasonable accommodation would be is is a modification or adjustment of a work criteria for for a job. So someone who someone who's like a qualified person, like to the skills and knowledge, they can be have a reasonable accommodation. An example of that would be someone who had a, a knee surgery. If they're a packer and they're on their feet all the time, their doctor might require them to sit, like not be on their feet for their knee to heal. So what, it, what an accommodation would be is like just buying a stool where they can pack stuff while they're sitting there. And an accommodation isn't always, it can be like super simple or it could be something more than just that. So, but a, an employer can deny a reasonable accommodation request if it is an undue hardship. And what that is is something, is an accommodation that would be too drastic or expensive for an employer to produce. And if that accommodation causes an undue hardship, the employer must try to find them another job where they're qualified to work. And when requesting a reasonable accommodation, one must be qualified for the job. The employer must know that they're disabled, disabled or have a disability. And they aren't, obviously they're not required to make it if it causes that, such an issue. And for those who need to modify their buildings, they do get a tax break and they'll get money back and that could be up to fifteen thousand a year to make the to cover the expenses of updating a building to ADA standards. And to do that, they must maintain records of an employer with a disability, and that would be in their personnel file, along with their reasonable accommodation requests and all that. So yeah, this would be um, like something you'd have in your personnel file. And like who's your supervisor and all that exciting stuff. And then for seeing local government, there is like a section under ADA for that, and it's Title II. And a local or state government employer cannot discriminate against disabilities and can't like all projects and activities and buildings must be up to the requirements of the ADA. And state and local government have to eliminate any like any requirements that would keep people out, like screen out or tend to screen out people with disabilities. Like there are some jobs that require, have physical requirements and if you can't meet them, like you're just not, you're not in. And yeah. So public entities must make sure that their buildings are up to ADA standards, such as ramps, elevators, parking spots close to the building, like no, um, no, like um, transportation blocks, like people who have like the ramp. And then there's companies like IBM. They have um, disability awareness programs, and they also have um, they have special programs to hire and retain and recruit people who have disabilities. So that's like a popular one. Then Ernst and Young is a big auditing company and they're multi they're international and they have empo like different employer employment groups and one of them is the people with disabilities and what they have is telecommuting opportunities for those who cannot physically make it to work every day and PNG is another big um, company that here a lot of the products that they sell and they also have like an inclusive workplace and they have training for disability awareness and they also have a program with to um, hire and maintain retain like people who have disabilities and then like for my job like it really doesn't what I my current employer it's not really it doesn't apply because there's like a raw like a physical test that you have to pass so I did for my internship you know parking place at parking spots everyone sees them in front of like all the buildings and they're up right in front of the entrance so there's not an issue getting to the building and then elevators, all like all public buildings have elevators, like you see them in the rec center or at the library. 
because not everybody can use the stairs. Like obviously, like this guy, he's in a wheelchair, and people with walkers, and I don't know, these electric scooters. I don't really know what they're called though. So yeah. Okay, so um, I'll be talking about age discrimination, and age discrimination involves cheating someone who is either an applicant or an employee less favorable because of his or her age. Um, and this applies to people over 40 and not under 40. Um, so an employee can never just hire you because you're too old. But he or she can um, fire you if you're you know, 18 because it's like your employment at will. So if he don't want you, she don't want you, you're gone. But it's not on the base, it's on the base of the age. It don't have so there's this preconceived notion that younger workers, they're enthused, you know, they're coming in, they're going to show you what you got, whereas, like, older workers, they come in with the bad habits from their other employers, or they just, you know, expect a higher wage um, because of their experience and um, expertise in the company. Um, so older workers, um, one in five workers in the U.S. is over age of 55. Um, and 64 report that they've seen it or they've been a victim of age discrimination in the workplace. Um, so yeah, and then 58 believe age discrimination. So if you ever fill that application and they, um, they always ask you, are you over the age of 40? We click no, because most of us um, is not over the age of 40. Um, they do have a right to like deny your application and if you're over 40, then, you know, it's so veterans. Um, veterans, they kind of have it worse because, you know, they're in the military. Well, they don't really have it worse, but, like, most employers, they see it as they might have this um, disability. Most of them have PTSD, um, and they might not be able to, you know, work or perform the actions, but, however, Employees cannot um, discriminate against them um, because of this. And if they ever like enlist to go back after duty and then they come back, they always have a job and they cannot um, discriminate. Um, and 38% of complaints have been filed um, for military service people. And, um, and this is really common. Um, there has been um, 1,328 cases in 2003, and like I said, if you ever fill that application, they always ask you, have you ever been, you know, enlisted in the military? Click no. Um, and if you click yes, then they can work against you or for you, so depending on what job you kind of go for. Um, next, I'll be talking about, oh, yeah, so the jobs. Most jobs that, like, once you have military experience, it's jobs like in security or um, like armed forces and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So on to the next. So pregnancy. Pregnancy is a big issue, like in the workplace. Um, most people who are like pregnant, they don't really receive the same treatment as others, but. Employees, again, isn't allowed to discriminate against pregnancy, childbirth, or medical conditions pertaining to pregnancy. So when you're pregnant, it's very vital that you know you take care of yourself. And, um, and many employees, they see that this is a problem in the workplace. If you, don't, if you can't perform their, um, the task that they ask for, they might you know, take you out on leave, which in the next case, um, staying with Peggy. She was a, um, a UPS worker. They refused her right um, to, you know, basically they put her on light duty and she was upset with this. So she took it to court and um, basically she lost, um, she lost her CDLs. So if you're ever Peggy, you can file a complaint with the EEOC um, in, uh, within 180 days. And then if that doesn't work, you can mediate and if that doesn't work, you can investigate. And if that doesn't work, you have the right to sue. So, um, and you can, you know, get a settlement. And this goes along with the Family Medical Leave Act, um, but it only applies.
as to you if you're eligible. So what makes you eligible if you work 12 months with the company before taking your leave and then, and if the company has more than either 15 or 50. So recently I just got hired at Dunbar Armor. Um, it's a car armor company and basically what I do is, right now I'm a vault personnel but in six months when I get my gun permit I'll be taking you know, classes and qualify for my gun because I'll be hopping. So when I went to the doctor to go take my physical, they seen that I had a swollen foot. And she was like, are you pregnant? And I'm like, uh, no. And she was like, okay, well, um, we're going to proceed with a drug test. So once we did the drug test, the um, results came back good. And she was like, okay, well, you're good. So I asked her, I said, so if in the event, if I was pregnant, would I get hired? She was like, oh, no, that's no problem, you know. And I'm like, oh, okay, because what does being pregnant have to do with just working in a vault with money, like thousands of millions of dollars? Um, so basically, I was um, employed. I had to go through references to get, to see, basically was I stayed enough to carry a firearm in New Jersey. Did the um, references, gave it back. They called my references. Boom, everything got cleared. So now I accepted my um, the offer, and now I'm working with Dunbar, and it's been going good for the last two weeks. So, and hopefully in six months, I have my gun to carry in the state of New Jersey. So. All, right. All right, thank you, Ovin. Uh, I want to be talking about Ban the Box, uh, a little bit about background checks, and uh, a little bit about MJ Lab. So I think this picture perfectly describes Ban the Box. It's the two employment applications telling the box to go away. And the box is the little thing on an employment application that says, uh, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Um, so what's the purpose? Uh, it allows people who might have once not had an opportunity to get their foot in the door. Um, and it allows people the opportunity where uh, if they had a prior conviction that didn't even apply to the job to actually get the job that they were looking for. Um, so it's not like a lottery system. Employers still have the responsibility and they have to uh, still give people background checks. Uh, it's, it's on them if something happens where they don't you know, do a background check. So when can they get a background check? After somebody uh, some signs their offer letter, then they could do a background check. Uh, so I threw in a little example about my internship. Uh, we were hiring um, warehouse workers, and uh, this, this male uh, had a background check come back with two prior convictions. Um, he spent a little time in jail, and uh, we called him up, and he lied to us about his jail time. He was saying that he was only there for like three weeks. So we were like, all right, we're going to call the court. Uh, we found out that he was there for six months which is completely different, but we also found out what he actually got convicted for. And his convictions were just for marijuana and a domestic dispute, which were uh, like 15 years old. So they didn't even apply. Um, like I said, they were, they were old. They were outdated. They didn't even really matter. But he was really just concerned about having the opportunity to land the job, which is the awesome thing about Ban the Box. It gives people the opportunity where they once might not have had that opportunity. Um, so like I said, he was able to land the job in the long run. So where is Ban the Box? Um, currently, since a lot of us are going to be working in the general vicinity, uh, it's in New Jersey and it's in New York, um, and it's also in Philadelphia. Um, throughout the entire United States of America, it's uh, in 100 cities and 21 states. Um, so now on to background checks. Uh, for background checks, there's a ton of them. Uh, just like this crayon box, for every single different like employee that you're hiring for, you could use a different background check for that employee. Um, the first one I want to talk about is uh, a credit report background check. And uh, this is governed by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. And uh, under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, you have to have the employee, or the candidate, I should say, uh, sign a waiver that um, saying that you're going to submit uh, this background check. And if you don't hire them, you have to give them an adverse action. Uh, criminal background check, the one that we all think of when we think 